What we're going to be going over here is a non-quadratic function. We're going to be calculating the eigenvalues here in the eigenvectors. And by calculating our eigenvectors here in eigenvalues, we're going to be eliminating any multiple cross terms here. And what we're going to be dealing with here is a sort of a complicated formula here where we've got uh, x, y, and z uh, variables here, but they're going to be raised to different powers. X, I'm showing here a coefficient times x squared, coefficient here times x to the fourth, and then we got all these cross terms here. We got a coefficient amount here times x times y, and then say we got an x cubed here times y, and so forth here, and we got one y cubed times z. Okay, and what we're going to do here with all these uh, cross terms that I'm showing here, and I'm showing them here in uh, with a green a rectangle around all the cross terms so you can see we got a whole lot of them here we got here x cubed times z here we got y times z cubed coefficient amount and so forth here so what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the cross multiplicative terms here and make this uh, function here workable and that's what we're going to accomplish that by calculating the eigenvectors and eigenvalues here and again we're going to be using some computer uh, algebra system here I'm using MapleSoft in this case here okay so this is our complicated function here and it's got a lot of cross terms and it does raise to certain powers here. And I want to point out here that when we get down to this y to the fourth here and x to the fourth, we can also reduce those from, say, we'll get rid of the higher power here. We can at least go down to y to the cubed here and x to the cubed and so forth here. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at visually here, I've got the function I grafted out here. I'm showing that function here. Got some holes cut in it here just to understand what the function is. It's sort of symmetric here. But we want to get this down to a workable terms here where we're going to get reduce our or get rid of our cross terms here in this function. Okay, and then I've got it shown here the x, y, z plane. So we're looking at here. So I just say in a plane here, we got x I'm showing here in red. Maybe z here is in this greenish color here. And then y is sort of in the goldish color. But I'm just showing the uh, planes, the x, y, z axis we're dealing with. And they're sort of canted off here at different angles we're looking at. Okay, so we got this complicated function. And then if we just move down here, I've taken this function here and I just overlaid it into our axis, our x, y, z axis. So you can see it's laying in here within our axis, this the function. Function showing here and then our different axes. And then over here, same thing. Here's our function showing in this sort of purplish color here. And then we've got our different axis. Okay, so you can see what we're looking at here. We're dealing with sort of a complicated function here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at what we would have done here. Now, we're going to look at how we calculate these eigenvectors here. But well, we're going to, just looking at the, uh, by eliminating the multiplicable cross terms here, this is what we're going to come up with. We're going to have some x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, and then we're going to have an x squared, y squared, z squared, and an x, y, and z and also that unit of one. Okay, so this is what we would have done here, and we'll look at how we've done this, but this is how we've reduced that function into more of a work workable terms here and understand what it is. So I've got all my x, x, y, and z cubed functions showing up here in the top times some coefficient amounts, and then I've got some x squared, y squared, and z squared terms shown here. And then I just got the x, y, and z terms shown here, and then we got that lone value here. Okay, so we've taken that complicated function that we had here and we reduced it into more of a workable, understandable terms. Okay, so if we go down here and just look at it pictorially here. So I've got the, the new function here. I've got it showing in this bluish color here and it's overlaid the, the axis that we have here, the x, y, and z axis. So that's by getting rid of those multiple pricative cross terms, we were able to... Um, it doesn't look very evident here, but we're able to get that function into more of a workable term. And then if we look at it over here, maybe get a little different angle. You see the axis that it's sitting on here. Actually, I didn't change the axis from by getting rid of the multiplicable cross terms. I've just left it the same here. But you can see where, how it's sitting in here. And what we've done here, we're more or less linearizing this function here by getting rid of those cross terms. Okay, 
Uh, and then if we go down here and just look at it in this case here. So what I've shown here in this sort of this greenish blue, this light greenish blue cyan color here, this is where we have no cross products. We've gotten rid of those. We just have the cubed, the squared, and then the to the power of one here terms. Okay, so you're looking at it here. And then underneath it, I just, this is what we originally started with, this goldish uh, uh, function here with all those, with all our functions, with all our gross terms here, the goldish portion. And then by getting rid of the cross products or cross terms, which we're gonna have done here, we're gonna come up with, and you can see how it's sitting in here, kind of moves out here, kind of linearizes it towards uh, the, as we move, increase our quantity in X, Y, and Z coordinates. And just looking at it from the same over here. So that's how, that's what we're doing here. We started out with this gold function here and here, and it's sort of symmetric here, and it looks like more of an ellipsoid. And then by getting rid of the cross terms, you can see what's coming on here. We, it, along with the uh, quantities here in X, Y, and Z coordinates, it kind of folds right over into our function here matches it pretty nice, but as we increase it, you can see it moves in this direction here and in this direction, it sort of linearizes it. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at how we'd make our, set up our matrix here uh, and, get, and get down to the point here where we can get eliminate our cross terms. Now to solve for our eigenvectors and our eigenvalues, and really this is the key to the whole problem here. It's really how we set up our symmetric or our square matrix. So what I've done here with this matrix for the, that polynomial, polynomial with our x, y, and z variables raised to those different powers with all those cross products here. What I've done here with the a matrix across the top here, those represent the columns here. And I've got, you can see I've got an x cubed, y cubed, z cubed term here for row or column one, two, and three. And then for columns four, five, and six, I got x squared, y squared, z squared. And then uh, we have the uh, x, y, and z powers here for eight, nine, and 10 columns. And then that lone unit here of one here. So those are my columns across the top. My columns across the side are identified in the same fashion, x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, and then x squared, y squared, z squared, x, y, and z, and then unit of one. So what I've done is I would have taken a look at that polynomial equation we have here. And what I would have done here, what we're gonna, across the diagonal, those are the terms in our polynomial that don't have any cross uh, products here. That is there alone here. So what I've done, let's just understand what's going on here. So let's start with that. So my x squared here is represented by 256, but remember we had a power here of x to the fourth. So I really divided that up between an x squared column here and our x squared row. So what I've done here is I've taken x squared times x squared, that gives 256. And that would be the same for the other higher powers here. But those are the uh, coefficients or the, uh, pollen, or the x, y, and z values that didn't have any cross products. And then I would have had the same for the y squared here. So I'd have had, a, that's probably would have been a y to the fourth, let's just say here. So y squared row times y squared column, 2401. Okay, so that takes care of our diagonal here and you'd proceed on in the same fashion here. Because those, the diagonal represents the, uh, in our polynomial where we don't have any cross products. But any place where we have a cross product, then we have to, to set up this matrix here with an upper portion here uh, on this side of the diagonal, the upper portion of this side of the diagonal, and then a lower portion here on the lower side of the diagonal here. And what we've done is you just take any of your coefficients here in that polynomial and you divide them out here. So let's understand again what's going on here. So let's take a look at, uh, I don't know, here's one minus 896 here in the Y column. And that is represented in X cubed here in a row. So we would have had, in this case, we would have had X cubed times Y and a minus and it would have been double that as our coefficient. So with the y here, I don't know, whatever that would have been 16 or 1700, something like that. I've taken half of that, and that would have been a minus uh, coefficient here, M minus 896, that represents y times x cubed. Now, the other half would have gone, let's go down and look at it here. It would have gone down over here. Here, x cubed column, minus 896, 
and then move across here, that would have been y here, x cubed times y in y row. So you see what's going on here. And you do that for each of those uh, cross products here. All you're doing is taking, uh, for example here, let's look at this one, x minus 5, 12. So it would have been twice that. It would be 10, 24 here, a minus 10, 24. So half of it goes to the top here, minus 5, 12, x. And what would that have been? That would have been a z cubed, that, my row z cubed. So I'd had I've, uh, uh, part of it, that function would have been z cubed times x here and minus a half of it, 5, 12. And then the other half goes down over here. That's, so you get a minus 5, 12 here, that would have been x cubed, and then row column here is z. Okay, so you see how we split it up here. You have to set up your symmetric matrix where all those coefficients with the cross products have to be divided between your upper triangular portion here and the lower triangular portion here. And then, uh, because just not to be confused here, and you try to reduce it to the absolute minimum you can here in your different powers for each of those three different variables. And I was able to get away with it by looking, at taking the cubes, the squared, and then just the single powers here for both my rows and columns here. Okay, so that's about how you would do that. Now let's move down here and get into our cal calculations. So secondly here, you're going to come up with a new matrix here. So you take this a, and again, you're going to use some computer algebra system here to solve this. So you take your A matrix that we have set up here with our upper and lower portions here in our diagonals, and you subtract from a, and you add in this lambda, this artificial variable here, times the identity matrix, and you subtract that here from your A matrix. And it has to have to call out, for, in this case, it's a 10 by 10 matrix. So essentially what we've done here, and let's just look at it. We've taken that matrix up on the top here and we added, we subtracted that lambda, that artificial variable here, along our diagonal here for all of those values here. And if, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with the determinant, but just looking at it here, you're going to see here a minus lambda, we had just a, a zero coefficient there here. And then 256 here with minus lambda. I just got them shown here in green, just so you understand what's going on. We're subtracting that lambda here from our symmetric matrix here along the diagonals. Okay, so we'd have done that. Then the next thing we have to call out is in our computer algebra system, and it, MapleSoft here, it just calls a determinant of that matrix here, and you set it equal to zero, and then you're gonna factor it out. So. What you're going to come up with is some characteristic equation here that we're showing. We've got this lambda to the ninth, lambda to the eighth, lambda to the seventh, sixth, and so forth here. And what would we do is we factor this out, and that is going to give us our eigenvalues here, essentially. That'll give us our eigenvalues. But what we're going to have here is a problem, and let's go look at it. Okay, so for my MapleSoft here, I would have... Uh, called out the function here, eigenvalues of, uh, it would have been actually the A, A matrix, the A matrix that we're looking at here. Now, those uh, characteristics come off the other matrix, the A, A here. But I'm just showing what we've done. Either way, you're going to come up with some root of here, raised to some power here, and that's the MapleSoft fashion of doing it. And just for the eigenvalues alone, you're going to have many, many pages of all this. You're going to have like z to the 7th, z to the 8th, and this root of. You're going to have many, many pages. And then if you do it for the eigenvectors, you're going to have like 100 pages here of all this stuff. That's, that's the way MapleSoft solves it. But there's a way to get around it, and they've got a number of ways that you look at here. But I looked at several of them, and the one that worked the best here is... When you get into a situation like that, look into your software uh, regarding, say, a, a map function here. I got a function called map. I'm going to evaluate all these many pages here all and come up with the, all of the values here of, I have shown here as S was my uh, variable here. And what would have, what it have done here, this is what it would have given me. So I've moved here from my eigenvalues and to all these many, many pages of the root of the solution here. I called out this map function to evaluate everything here, and it would have given me my eigenvalues in this case here. And I've got it shown here. 
x cubed, y cubed, z cubed terms, and x squared, y squared, z squared, and x, y, and z here. Those are my eigenvalues here. And it was only able to do it through this mapping function here. So you're going to really have to look at your software package to see what you have to come up with a solution, if in fact it gives you the solution that we have up above here with these many, many different pages. Okay, so each one of these numbers here, or values here, represent my eigenvalues in this case. I do have an imaginary portion here in two of them as well here. But nonetheless, just putting that aside here, those are my eigenvalues. Okay, so what I've done here, let's just look at it. I'm, I'm showing eigenvectors here. We've, or through our eigenvectors we would have, and eigenvalues, we would have eliminated any multiplicable cross terms here. So we're just back to that equation again here. This is what the solution is, and if you look at it up, match everything up here, that you, eigenvalues here, you're going to match into our x cubed, y cubed, z cubed coefficients here. We've got that single term here, single value here, minus six, 65, 61. Then we got our x squared, y squared, and z squared and then x, y, and z values, either plus or minuses here. Okay, so I've done it for the eigenvalues here. Now you would have gone through the same thing here for your eigenvectors here, the same procedure. And you'd solve it in the same manner here. We, actually, I'm just call, I would call it out as an eigenvector here as a function in my MapleSoft. But in fact, it would have given me many, many pages, maybe 100, 100 pages or so of that root function. Let's just go back up here and look at it. It would have given me many, many pages of that root function here. So I really didn't do it, but I'd have to go through the same procedure here and map it out. And then for each one of these um, eigenvalues here, you're going to have the eigenvectors here, which would be quite quite a number here, quite, quite the number here. But nonetheless, you do it in the same fashion here. But anyway, what we've done here, and if we go back down to it here, we are able to get rid of all those cross terms and make clean up this function here. So these eigenvectors and values here define our function differently here. So I was able to even reduce the x to the fourth down to some x to cubes here by going with that my matrix here where I had the x squared times the x squared columns times the rows here. But we had also had some y to the fourth. So I got everything moved down here. I got rid of all the coefficients. It's neatly laid out here between your x, y, and z cubed functions, z squared fun or the cube functions here for the variables, the squared functions, and then just the lone power here of one for the functions. Okay, and so if we go back up here and just look at our little diagrams again here, this goldish ready or this greenish blue here. Those, this is my new function here, divided by my eigenvalues or eigenvectors here. And then the gold one underneath here, that's my old function here. But we were able to take that complicated function here with all those cross products and bring it down into probably a little bit easier understanding here. And essentially we're starting to linearize it here. Because if I move those numbers out here, increased my size of my plot here, they would go out in this direction and this direction here. But nonetheless, we're, that's what you've, we do here, do when we've got eigenvectors and eigenvalues. You're redefining, you're really, you're rotating your axis here. But I'm not showing the axis in here. I'm just showing the function itself here. Okay, so that'll end our discussion here on eigenvectors and eigenvalues here with this uh, large polynomial we had here with higher powers and any, many different cross products.